take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. And now, before we go down to Pine Ridge, I'd like to tell about a simple, safe, efficient reducing plan that nutritionists have worked out. It's called the Horlick Weight Control Plan, and it consists simply of drinking a good glass full of Horlick's malted milk, either hot or cold, in place of your regular noonday luncheon. That's simple enough, isn't it? Here's how it works. Those extra pounds are just a matter of too many calories. Now, that's where Horlick's comes in. It doesn't have the excess calories a big, heavy lunch has. Yet it's sustaining and nourishing. And there's something else, too. Horlicks is energy-giving. This plan keeps you alert later. Won't let you get drowsy. That's because Horlicks is so easy to digest. And remember, the Horlick plan is a safe plan. You can always be sure about Horlicks. It won't affect your health, as radical weight-reducing plans do. And now, folks, just a word from Lum and Abner. They regret the delay in sending out the flashlights that so many of you recently requested. The fact of the matter is, such a lot of you sent in that the flashlight factory, as we said before, just can't make the flashlights quickly enough. But, of course, if you sent in for one, you'll get it just as soon as the factory can possibly make it. And Lum and Abner assure you that it's well worth waiting for. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Abner didn't know what he was getting into when he agreed to furnish supplies for the circus that is playing in Pine Ridge this week. His stock of merchandise is now completely exhausted, and he has no cash with which to replenish it. The only security that he has for the debt is a mortgage on the animals in the show, and he certainly has no use for them, as he has more on hand now than he can feed. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner down at the Jotham Down store. Abner is making friends with a parrot, which he acquired yesterday, to add to his collection of livestock. Listen. Come on now. Come on now. Say it now. Say, say, uh, say Polly wants a cracker. Say it. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that, Long? No, I weren't there. <laughs> I said, say, Polly wants a cracker. <laughs> he said it. Yeah, yeah, listen to that. I said, you bet, Abner. Did you hear him? For goodness sake. <laughs> oh, that, I, that's the cutest thing i ever seen in my life. <laughs> that's the way Polly talks some more now. <laughs> hey, that little rascal, I'm going to get you a cracker if it's the last thing I ever do. <laughs> One, two, goodness, yeah. Abner. That's all you did today. Set up and talk with that blame parrot. I'm going to wring his neck and throw him out the back door if you don't get it. You ain't going to do no such a thing. Well, get him on out of here. I'm uh, tired of hearing that jabbering. I wouldn't take nothing for this parrot. That's all you did all day is fuss at me about talking to him, too. I don't know which is the worst, you or the parrot. Yeah, come on, Polly. I'll take you on out back here in the feed room. Someday I'll get in a store of my own. I'll just put you in there and then you'll just talk all day. Hello? This is a jot down store. I'm Edwards talking. I know his love when I sent him down. Shut up, door. Abner. I'm talking on the phone. Oh, I never seen him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just a minute. Uh, Hold the receiver. <laughs> here, Abner, it's for you. Who is it? I don't know. They never said. Yeah, if there's somebody else complaining about my stock getting out, I'm just going to hang up that smack in their ear. That's what I'm going to do. Here. Hello. Oh. <laughs> well, hello, Colonel. It's the uh, manager of the circus. Oh, yeah. That's who I allowed it was. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Colonel, I, I'm sorry, but I, I just ain't got no more feed. <laughs> Well, I, I ain't even got enough to feed my own stock here that I've traded for. Well, I, I could if you'd pay me what you owe me, but I just ain't got the cash to buy none with now. Uh-huh. Well, I, I don't know what to tell you to do, Hardy. If I did know, I'd do it myself. I'm in the same fix you're in. I got a bunch of animals over here of my own to feed. Well, the trouble is, I'm out of groceries, too. Yeah. <laughs> no, I ain't got a thing left on my shelf. I'm just clean out. I swapped the last dab of groceries I had this morning for a cage full of pet squirrels. Uh-huh. Well, now, you might try Dick Hutterson's store. He might let you have it. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah, I know. He's awful strict about letting stuff out on the credit. 
Yeah, he's got some groceries here, but he ain't got no feed for your animals. I bought all the feed he had off of him. Yeah, well, uh, wait a minute. I'll let you talk to him. Uh, here, now, my son wants to talk to you. He wants to buy some groceries. Well, I don't want to sell him nothing on a credit. That outfit just about ready to blow up. Well, get up here and tell him, man. He wants to talk to you. Tell him I ain't here. I've done told him that you was here. That's right. Goodness let me have it. Well, if you don't want to let him have it, well, you better say so. For now, he's got a way of talking folks into doing things, regardless of whether they want to or not. He's an awful talker. Yeah, I believe that black mustache and them gold teeth of his sort of mesmerizes your body. Yeah. Hello? Yes, sir, this is well, him. I wish that parrot of mine listened to him. I believe he could mock him. Well, I'd love to, but you see, I'm... Yeah, yeah I, I know you are, but I'm running a strictly case to... Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, if I know that I get my money in two days, but, uh, well, of course, that's different. I never know that. Uh-huh. Why, sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what all was it she's wanting to get? What's the matter? What did you slap a receiver up in a year for? Man, that was the only way I could figure out of it. I seen I was weakening. That's how talking this fellow I ever seen in my life. He took the shirt right off in the fellow's back. Oh, <laughs> I thought he was wanting to buy some groceries. That's uh, what he's talking to me about. That's what he's talking to me about, too. I thought he said that uh, he was trying to talk you out of your shirt. Well, he would have been if I'd let him have them groceries on the credit. You mean if you let him have them groceries on the credit that you'd had to uh, throw your shirt in, too? No, Abner. The shirt ain't got nothing to do with the groceries. That's just an expression, just an old lettered saying. Somebody's got a smooth line of talk that way, you ought to say he could talk somebody out of the shirt on their back. Yeah, but now, he's so fat, Mom. I, I don't be with your shirt with pity. Why, of course it wouldn't. Yeah, he's crazy, ain't he? <laughs> well, why didn't you just tell him that your shirt wouldn't fit him? He never asked me nothing about my shirt. Yeah. Well, where'd you get the idea, then, if he was trying to talk you out of it? I never said he was trying... Never mind, just let it go, let it go. Many pretty silk shirts that he's been wearing around here, and then trying to talk you out of that mirror wearing there. Uh, what'd he offer you for it, Mom? He never offered me nothing. Well, I was swan to goodness. Well, I never thought he'd go around begging for old clothes that way. And if he'd cut out smoking so many of them big cigars, why, he might get enough money to buy him a new shirt. Abner, if you say shirt one more time, I'm going to pop you one. Don't reckon that gold of mine got down there to the circus and ate up his, uh, his, uh... Ate up what? <laughs> well, I can't say it. <laughs> you said you was going to pop me one if I said shirt there another time. Yeah, and I will, too. And now, if he tries to put in a complaint for damages, I can just credit him with what he owes me. I know I ain't going to pay him no cash money. I know that. Well, that goat of yours never had up no shirts of his, hmm? Well, I don't know now. He got over there in Beulah Phillips' his yard and had up two of her dresses right off in the clothesline. Yeah, he picked a bad day to get loose. Yeah, wash day that away. Yeah, I'm glad you got all your stock rounded up. I never heard so many folks making complaints in my life as it was around here you see. Oh, yeah, yeah. They scattered all over town, looks like. Went every place. But that's one way of getting them fed, though. <laughs> they hadn't have got out and got in the gardens around here. Well, I don't know what I would have fed them last night. That's the reason I weren't in no hurry to get them locked back up again. Now, when you go to figure up on how you come out on this swap out of yours, you want to be sure and figure in all the damages you're going to have to pay off on account of your stock getting out this year. Well, I ain't going to have to pay out no damages. I thought you said yesterday you was going to make whoever owned that stock pay every bit of damages it was dead. Yeah, sure, but uh, I, I never knowed it was mine when I said that. Oh, yeah, that's different when it's your own stock, huh? Why, sure it is. I can't make myself do nothing. I've tried it before, and it just won't work on me, Tom. I'm just too stubborn-headed. I, I just can't scare myself by threatening to throw me in jail like I can other folks. But I know all the time in the back of my head they ain't going to do it, so I just don't pay no attention to it. And you ought not to show no favor, right? When you take a nose, when you were swore in as constable, you said you'd uphold the law to the best of your ability. I know, for I give you the oath myself. Yeah, but now, Tom, it ain't a bit of use now to lock myself up in jail. I've got the keys, and I know what I do. I'd break right out again. Just break out just as fast as I put myself in. You see, it's different. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here comes Dick Huston. Huh? Look at that. Look at what he's in such a hurry about. Well, I don't know. Excited about something, looks yeah. like. I hope my stock ain't broke out again. Well, howdy, Dick. Yeah, come in, Dick. Come in. What's the matter? Oh, nothing much, Lance. Uh, Abner, you let that circus bunch have some stuff on the credit, didn't you? 
Yeah, I furnished them with feed and groceries till I run out here. Yeah, they just now called up on some more stuff. Even tried to get me to sell them some stuff on a credit, but I just told him pint blank that I didn't think he was good for it, and I just wouldn't let him have it. Yeah, well, they called me down to the store, too. And he seen he was up again a pretty smart businessman when he was talking to me. Yeah, well, you was wise there, Lump. Uh, how much do they owe you now, Abner? Why, well, I figured it up this morning. I got it here on a slip trimmer. Let's see where did I put that thing. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Well, let's see now. All the groceries and the feed that I let them have uh, come to $282.40. I ain't made no mistake. Now, you made a mistake when you let them have it. I yeah, you it. better get over there and get your money, Abner. Oh, they ain't going to pay me till they get ready to leave town. Yeah, well, from the looks of things, they're ready to leave right now. They're taking down their tents and packing up everything over there. They are. Yeah, well, I reckon the colonel's thinking on coming by here on his way out of town and settling up with me. Yeah, he'd be Yeah, right. well, I wouldn't wait for him, Abner. You'd better go over there right now and demand your money. That's what you better do. Yeah, more than likely they're trying to slip out of town without paying you. I told you all along you was going to lose money on them, Abner. Well, here, I've got a mortgage on all them animals over there. I know they're worth more than $282. Well, I don't know what you'll do with them, but if you want them, you better let me make out some tax men papers and you go over there and serve them on them right now. Yeah, that's the thing to do, Abner. Be sure that you're protected over there. All right, doggies, make them out. And when Cedric gets back, well, tell him to come on over there to the circus ground. Help me fetch them animals back over here, Lom. <laughs> All right, doggies, I will have a collection now. Sure enough, lions and elephants and camels and zebras. <laughs> Well, Abner may get those animals, but we bet it'll be no circus to feed them. <laughs> in the minute or so that we have left, I'd like to read a grand letter to the mothers in our audience tonight. It's from Mrs. E.F.C. When my baby was born, she writes, I was determined that I should nurse him myself. I stopped drinking coffee and tea and started to drink Horlick's malted milk with all my meals. Between meals, too, and at bedtime. As a result... I was able to nurse my baby for ten whole months. Today, he has a record of never having had one sick day. Last summer, he received first prize at a baby show for being the huskiest, healthiest baby there. Many of my friends predicted I would put on weight that would be difficult to lose, but I didn't gain a pound. Both baby and I continue to drink Horlicks. He likes it better than anything else. I do hope that other mothers can profit from my experience. Yours truly, Mrs. E.F.C. Well, thank you, Mrs. E.F.C. We hope so, too. Horlicks certainly is a fine food drink for nursing mothers. That's why so many medical and child-feeding authorities have recommended it for almost 50 years. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health. <laughs> <laughs> 